Brea here from Extract URL and in today's video I have something pretty awesome for you. I am showing you many of the Excel shortcuts and hacks that I used in my entry level actuarial position and on my internships. So these tips are going to be really really great for you to know since you are hopefully going into an actuarial position or an actuarial internship soon and you'll want to know how to use Excel in ways that will allow you to do things quicker and more efficiently than you would if you didn't know these shortcuts. So I hope this video helps you. Make sure you stay to the end because I'm going to share a bonus tip with you right at the very end. If you haven't already, make sure you go and download my Excel functions PDF. I mentioned this in the last three videos and if you haven't watched those, I highly recommend you go and watch those too because they are all about Excel for actuaries as well. I've done four videos now. This will be the fourth one and they're all about Excel in the actuarial workplace. So I highly recommend you go check those out before you even watch this video and go get my Excel functions PDF download so that you know all the functions and all the Excel capabilities that you need to know as an aspiring actuary. It's really, really, really important that you are an Excel ninja when you start applying for actuarial positions because employers want candidates that know how to use Excel inside and out. Okay, let's get into these Excel shortcuts and hacks. Oh, by the way, these aren't things that are specific to the actuarial career. These can be used in a stepping stone position. They can be used for Excel projects. Basically, Basically, anytime you are using Excel, you can use these little formulas and functions and capabilities that I'm going to talk about in this video. These are things I used all the time when I was working in actuarial roles. Okay, so one of the most common keyboard shortcuts that I used would be Control S, which automatically saves your workbook. It's really important to save your workbook often because you never know when the power is going to go out. And I had that happen several times at my workplaces where the power would go out and we just would lose everything that we were working on or the computer would crash. You just never know what's going to happen. So Control S and doing that frequently is going to help make sure you limit the chance of of losing your work. Okay, next is a pretty common one that you may have actually used in other things like Word or maybe just on the internet or doing other things, but this is Control C, Control V, and Control X. So Control C allows you to copy a cell and then you can paste it somewhere else by using Control V. So as you saw, I just copied from this cell and copied it to this cell using Control C to copy and Control plus V to paste. Another thing you might want to use sometimes is the Control X feature, which is cut rather than copy. So if I do Control X, it's going to cut the value from this cell. And if I paste it into this cell using Control V, then you see it's actually taken it from here and put it here. It's not just a copy, but it's actually taken it. So that was the control X and the control V functions. Okay, sometimes you want to format your cells and there's an easy way to do that. If you just go to the cell that you want to format, let's say I want to make it bold. I can use control B to make it bold. I can use control I to make it italicized. I can use control U to make it underlined. So those are some shortcuts you may want to memorize because you'll probably use them quite often. I use specifically control B all the time because you often do want to bold things in Excel. In order to get rid of this formatting, you can just do the same thing. So if I do control B, I'm going to get rid of the bold now. If I do control U on a cell that already has underlining, then it's just going to take the underlining away. And again, if I do control I, I will get rid of the italicized lettering. So sometimes when you're working in Excel, actually it happens quite often, you may want to highlight cells for some reason. And there's a really easy way to do this with your keyboard shortcuts. You can just do shift, and then just use your arrow keys to go down or up, or you can go up and over in any direction. So that's a really easy way to highlight cells quickly. Now, sometimes you might want to highlight all the values in a column. So if you wanted to do that, you could do shift. And instead of just pressing your down arrow, like I showed you before, 
what you would do is you actually press shift and control at the same time and then click your down arrow. So in this case, if I do that, you'll see it takes me right to the end of my data so that I can highlight all the cells in that column that are in my data. And you'll notice it goes to the end of my data. If I want it to go to the end of the workbook or the bottom of the workbook, then I can press down again and it's going to take me to the end of the workbook. Again, you can do that to the left and right too. If I wanted to go all the way to the right, then I could press shift and control and click the right arrow button. Or if I wanted to go all the way to the left, I could pre press shift, control, and the left arrow button. Now, sometimes you don't want to highlight, you just want to go to the bottom of the data really quickly. For example, if I wanted to navigate down to the bottom of this table, I could just press control and then the down arrow, and that would take me right to the end of my data. Again, if I want to go all the way to the bottom of the workbook, then I would have to press down again. And the same if I want to get from here to the top of my workbook, I could press control and then up and it will take me to where my data starts. And then I could do that again to get to the top of that column. It works the same if you want to go left or right as well. If I press control and then right arrow, I will go to the end of my data here. And if I want to go all the way to the right hand side of my Excel workbook, I will click the right arrow again and go all the way over there. Now, when you're working in Excel a lot, you often mess up. So you might have to use these buttons that allow you to go back and undo what you did before. So let's say I made this bold and I colored this with red text. And then this one here, maybe I colored that orange, but then I decided I didn't want that to happen anymore. I didn't want to do that. I could use Control Z to undo what I did just like that. So when I did that, all I was doing was pressing control and Z at the same time to undo the changes that I made. Sometimes you want to redo the changes that you made and you can just do control Y in that case and it's going to redo those three things that I just did. I used these functionalities quite a lot when I was working in actuarial positions and I still use them all the time now when I am working in Excel. Now let's say you are at the bottom of your workbook right here and you just want to go to the very top of it and to the left hand side. So the very top left hand corner. A really easy way to do that is to just press control and then the home button and it will take you right to cell A1 of your workbook. Okay, now we're going to get out of all the keyboard shortcuts and get into some of the other functionalities and hacks that Excel has within it. Okay, so before when I was showing you the control C functionality, I didn't state that it has some nuances that you have to work around. For example, if this cell right now is orange and it's already formatted orange and then I wanted to, let's say, copy this, if I control copy and then I paste it right here, it's going to actually keep the formatting of the cell that I copied and that's not always what you want to do. So I'm just going to control Z to undo that. You might just want to copy that formula only into this cell. As you can see, this is a formula right now. It's referencing E7, so it's exactly the same as this cell. So I might want to copy just the formula. In that case, I can control C and I can click on this cell where I want to paste it. And if I right click and go to paste special, I can select formulas and that's only going to copy over the formulas or it's only going to paste the formulas. It's not going to paste the formatting of the cell. Since we just copied the formula, it's referencing this, which is zero, which is why it is giving us a value of zero. Sometimes that's not how you want it to work. You actually want this to say 185. So in that specific scenario, you could just do control C to copy this value. And over here, if you right click and then press paste special and click values, instead of bringing the formula over or pasting the formula, it's going to just paste the values. So if I click OK, it's just going to bring over the value 185. And you'll notice that this is not a formula anymore. When you do this, when you copy a formula and 
make it into just values or you just paste values. That is called hard coding the data. Okay, now let's get rid of that. I'll remove the formatting here. Okay, sometimes you're just going to want cells to increase by a certain value. So for example, if we put one here and then we put two here and we just want this to be three and this to be four and this to be five, instead of having to put that all in manually, we can actually use this Excel functionality that instantly picks up the pattern or recognizes the pattern and continues it for you. So just by selecting these two cells, I will drag over by using this little box, I'll drag it over to the right and it's automatically going to pick up the pattern, the pattern being that I'm increasing by one and it's going to continue that pattern until I tell it to stop. So that's a functionality that comes in really useful. It doesn't just have to be increasing by one, you could have it increased by three. So for example, if I put one there and then I put four here and then I highlight those two cells and drag over, it's going to automatically increase by three between each increase. You can also do this with dates. So for example, if I put January 1, 2021 here, and then January 3rd, 2021 here, there's two days in between. Now, if I drag this over, you're going to see that it fills in the dates, increasing by two days every time. Another really awesome one that I used all the time was for things like month number. So if I wanted to put month one and then month two, then we can actually select those two cells, drag it over, and it will automatically change the value at the end there so that you don't have to manually do that. Excel is really smart in that way. So Format Painter is also something I used quite often. Now let's say that we are going to create a table out of this. So we have data here, data, data, and we just have data in all of these cells. Now let's say we want to copy the formatting here. And I'm going to make this bold just to make it interesting. So I'm going to click Control B to make all that text there that I've highlighted in bold. Now I might want to apply the same formatting to these cells. So what I could do is I could just select the cell that I want to copy the format of and then click Format Painter. And now you can see it has selected this cell and it has this different border going around it to signify that it has copied that cell format. And now we can select all these cells and it will automatically apply the exact same formatting to these cells as I have for these cells. So that's called the Format Painter and it comes in really, really useful. Okay, remember I do have a bonus shortcut for you at the very end, so stick with me. But I do wanna let you know that the shortcuts here that I've shared with you, this is not an extensive list of them. There are tons and tons and tons of shortcuts that you can learn in Excel. It's just a matter of learning the ones that you actually are going to use. There's no point in me giving you tons and tons of shortcuts because you might never use them. But if you find that you are doing the same thing over and over in Excel with your mouse or you are doing something and just feels like it's taking too long, there's probably a keyboard shortcut for that. And you can just go Google it, look up what you're trying to do, and you'll probably find a shortcut that will allow you to get that done more efficiently and quicker. I hope this video helped you. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. I love to see when you guys are liking the videos that I create for you because it really helps me stay motivated to keep bringing you this awesome content at least I think it's awesome. This great actuarial content that is going to help you in your career. So if it did help you, please give a thumbs up. And if you didn't already, make sure you go download that Excel PDF with all the functions and formulas and Excel capabilities that you need to know as an aspiring actuary. I will leave a link to that down in the description below. So go download it right away if you haven't already. And also this is the fourth video in a four part series. So if you haven't watched the previous three, go check those out. They are just as helpful as this one. And okay, Okay, I will leave you with that last bonus tip that I talked about. Okay, so sometimes when you have a table, you don't want all the data to be showing. So let's insert a column right here. I'm going to insert this and then I'm going to make it equal the sum of these three values. So right now it is summing up year one, year two, and year three premium. 
I'm going to have that go all the way down and it's going to copy that formula into all of these cells below it. And now I'm going to call this column total prem paid for total premium paid. For some reason, let's say we don't want these three columns to show, we just want this total premium to show. We can either hide these three columns by highlighting them and right clicking and press hide. And then they're totally hidden. You can't even see them at all. Or there is another way. So I'm going to do control Z to undo what I just did and bring those columns back so that they're no longer hidden. Another thing we could do is just group all these. So if I go highlight those three columns and go to data, then I can go to this group functionality and it's going to bring this bar up here that allows me to close or open those columns so that you can easily see them if you want to or hide them if you don't want to see them. Okay, that's all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.